In this uh, video we'll be looking at transforming data to linearity. So I have here a set of x and y values in front of me and I've entered these into my calculator with a list in spreadsheets. All the values for x are present as are all the values for y. So let's uh, first of all complete ourselves a stats calculation for a linear regression for x and for y. Okay, so we can see here we've got a gradient of 20.1273 and a y-intercept of minus 91.4545. Let's look at this visually. Select our axes. Add in a regression line, at least squared regression, and we'll also add in a residual. So as you can see, we have a nice, relatively straight-looking line of best fit with the least squared regression. However, you can see here that our residual plot doesn't represent a strong linear relationship you've got points above the line and then points below the line and a negative residual then a residual that's positive. So a summary here looking at our graphs we can see that the least square regression line is y equals 20.13x take away or minus 91.45 very high correlation coefficient of 0.99 however with the residual plot we say the points of the residuals show a curved pattern with a series of positive then negative residuals along the x-axis um, rather sorry with a series of positives then negative residuals and then back to a positive residual with the u-shape along the x-axis so the conclusion we can make is that the original data probably have a non-linear relationship and we should look to transform this data. So we've got six different transformations at our disposal. We've got the reciprocal of x, the reciprocal of y, the logarithm of x, the logarithm of y, both of which to the base 10, and we can square the x data and square the y data. As to which one we choose, let's have a look. We look at the circular transformations and we can see that the data we have has this shape in the bottom right hand quartile the data seems to curve around to the top and if we look here not as easy to see but it's the same curving shape whereby our line of best fit has a positive residual then a negative residual back to a positive residual so we've got log of y as one of our possible transformations the reciprocal of y is another and x squared as our third and final transformation so our first transformation was a log to the base 10 of y let's get our original data for x and y and the transformation we wish to occur is a log to the base 10 of y. So equal control to so bring up the log base 10 of y. Now you see here the calculator wishes to know if y is a column or a variable. Well, we're in column B. So we don't want a column reference, we want a variable reference. OK, and there's our log data for the various log y's. Again, let's perform a linear regression. Stats, stats calculation, and a linear regression. The x values were x, and the y values, oh, what we haven't done is given it a heading, such as the log of y. OK, let's try that again. Stats calculation, linear regression, the x values are x, the y values the log of y, press OK. And again, we've got here a gradients and our y intercepts and our r correlation, which you can notice has gone from originally at 0.99 now down to 0.98. So the uh, correlation has actually decreased, which may not go well in terms of whether or not we've improved our linearity. But in order to see if we have in fact improved our linearity, we'll need to graph. So again, we're going to select x, sorry, x rather, and log of y from this 
we're going to add our regression line with a y equals mx plus c. And below that, what we're after is a residual plot. And we can see here that we still have not a great linear relationship based on this residual. We go from a negative residual to a positive residuals, then back down to a negative residual. So again, here's our summary. We have our least squared regression line, log 10 of y equals 0.0949x plus 0.991, and our value of 0.98, which is in fact lower than the original correlation coefficient. And again, we can say the points in the residual shell curve patterned with a series of negative, then positive, and back to negative residuals along the x-axis, what I'd like to call a frowny face. The original data probably have a nonlinear relationship, so we look to do another transformation of this data. Okay, so our second transformation was a reciprocal of y. If we go back to original, we've tried a log to the base 10 of y, now we're trying a reciprocal of y. Transformation number two. Back to our calculator. Let's make a new list in spreadsheets. We'll put in x, we'll put in y, and this time we wanted a reciprocal of y, and I've called it recipi y equals. Now reciprocal is just 1 over again y. Okay, again we want to say that y was a variable, not a column, and there's our data the reciprocal. Okay, once again, let's perform a stats calculation. Linear regression y equals mx plus c. Our x values were x. Our y's were reciprocal of y. Okay, now we have a, um, a negative gradient, very small gradients, and an intercept point, y intercept of 0 0.047. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at this graphically and see what we've got. So our graph is going to be x against the reciprocal of y. It doesn't look to have improved the linearity whatsoever. If anything, it looks like it's got worse. Analyze this data, hit our regression. Uh, y equals mx plus c. There's our equation that we had just a minute ago. 0.003244x plus 0.04712. But more importantly, we want to see what happens with our residual plot. Do we get another smiley frowny face or do we get what we're after in a scattered residual plot? Nope, we've got in this case a smiley face. We've got a positive residual into a negative residual after a positive residual. This probably isn't our best uh, transformation. In fact, if we look here, we can see here's our equation 1 over y, the reciprocal of y is equal to negative 0.00324 plus x, that is, plus 0.0471. The r the correlation coefficient of negative 0.8707, that's actually dropped considerably. And as we just stated, the points of the residuals show a curved pattern, smiley face, with a series of positive, then negative, and back to positive residuals along the x axis. The original data probably have a nonlinear relationship, and we now need to consider yet another transformation. If we look up here, we've now tried our log 10 to the y. We've tried our, our reciprocal of y. We're up to our final and third transformation, which being an x squared. Okay, so our third and final x squared. We'll go again to our list of spreadsheets. We'll type in our x values, our y values, and let's do an x squared as the heading. The equation we're going to enter into this cell is going to equal to x and we're going to square it. Again, the x is actually a variable, not a column. There's our x squared, so 5 becomes 25, 6 squared is 36 and so forth. Okay, let's see how we go. Stats. Stats calculations. Y equals mx plus c linear regression. Our x in this case is an x squared. Most important to put that in is x squared, that's our transformation. And this time our y remains as y because it hasn't been transformed. Well, if we look at this, this time we've got a gradient of almost 1 and a y-intercept of minus 0.789. We can see here the r, the correlation coefficient, is nearly perfect. It's 0.999. This indeed looks promising for a 
successful linearity improvement or transformation rather. Let's graph it though. We want on the bottom x squared, on the vertical axis back to y, looking nice and linear. We add in our regression line, y equals mx plus c, and on top of that we'll add in our residual plot, and if we've got a nice linear relationship here we should find we have a scattered residual, and in fact we do, it goes from positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, this is perfect, we've got a very high correlation and a scattered residual plot indicating we have transformed our data to linearity. So, concluding, we now have a least squared regression line, y equals 1.006x squared, remembering that this is no longer x, it's been transformed to x squared, minus 0 0.7900, rounded to four decimal places, a Pearson's product moment correlation value of 0.998, and our residual plot, the points of the residual are randomly scattered above and below the x-axis, sorry. The original data probably have a line, a linear relationship. So the outcome is that the x squared transformation has indeed improved our r value and our residual plot also indicates an improved linearity.